Well, Preston, good morning, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of the PR Man and the Coach Talking Ball on the Ball Father Podcast. I'm Reggie Roberts, longtime NFL communication executive and observer of sports all over the nation. I'm joined by my super cool co-host, Mike Smith, head co- the winningest coach in Falcons history. What's up, Coach? How we doing, man? I'm doing good, Reg. It's a beautiful day. Hey, beautiful day. I hope you guys are in a good place. <laughs> It's beautiful in lovely Ormond Beach, and it's going to be 80 today, and sunshine for the rest of the week. We're all, we're all good. You know, let's just get right into it, Mike. The uh, the league meetings completed over the week. Oh, so, well, actually, they completed, wrapped up yesterday in lovely Phoenix, that wonderful Biltmore Hotel out in, out in Phoenix where they where they have the meetings. You know, a lot of news, Mike, a lot of news with regards to rules, a lot of, a lot of meetings with regards to what could possibly, who's going to buy the, the commanders, a lot of news. I mean, the first, the opening day, the meetings get started, not even... Now, meetings are two hours old when Lamar Jackson, the sort of, you know, um, the, the Ravens quarterback kind of makes an announcement, sends out, sends out a tweet to his fans saying that, you know, he, he wants to be traded and they haven't been able to come up with his, with his contract demands. And that, that, that set the meetings in the NFL world into a tizzy. What's your take on Lamar? And, and I know, I mean, it's, it's, it's only end of, end of March. We got a whole, you know, six, seven, five, six months before the season starts. It's a long, long period of time they could get something worked out. But right now, you know, it's looking like, you know, I don't, I, Lamar's future is at, at, at best uncertain right now with regards to playing for the Ravens. It really is, Reggie. And as you know, at the owners' meetings, there's uh, the whole NFL's there. You know, the, all 32 owners are in the in the building. All 32 general managers are in the building. All 32 head coaches are in the building. And then there's a lot of support staff as well. And as you know, when you get those group of men together, there's a lot more press there as well. So there's information coming out over these last couple of days and will start to trickle down and trickle out when they start heading back to their to their home cities. But uh, it's very interesting. And not, all I can say is it's it's drama is what it is. You know, we've got some more quarterback drama in the National Football League. As you know, um, Lamar Jackson does not have representation. He doesn't have an agent. He's at, and he's and now he's come out and he's at for a trade. Uh, it's it's very very complicated with what's going on right now. Uh, you know, he's been given the non-exclusive tag, uh, which is different than an exclusive tag. And it, I I believe there's only been five quarterbacks since the tag has been. Right. been uh, in in existence that have been non-exclusive and that was Steve Young in 93 I think Jim Harbaugh in 96 uh, Drew Brees with the Chargers in right. 05 Castle in 09 and uh, Cousins uh, with the Washington in 06 so it's been a while since this has happened but it's it's happened before and it's going to get interesting uh, without traditional representation with uh, uh the uh, Jackson crew, it's it's going to get interesting because <clears throat> it gets very, very complicated. Uh, and I, as we know, hey, didn't it get a little bit more complicated when it, news broke that a non-certified uh, agent contacted the New England Patriots? It just can't get any, can't get any crazier. So it's, it, it's uh, nutty. I mean, I agree with you. I, you know, I think it 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 create it creates an entirely different set of problems when teams don't have a central figure to negotiate or, or discuss things on your behalf. For example, let's say they want to talk to you about whatever, whatever the topic is, and you're in a workout or you're on the practice field. It just makes it messy. It makes it complicated and it makes it, un, you know, it makes it un, un, untenable to, for them to basically try to negotiate with you when you're represent or your mom or whoever it is when, when, and it's, it's, mo- it's basically, you told everybody, you're your own agent. Okay. It makes it complicated. And so I think he's put himself at a tremendous disadvantage by not having someone, specifically someone who is versed with the whole NFL PA with all the certifications and all the stuff that you're required to have these days to be an agent. No, absolutely. I, I think he's one of, of, one. I mean, there's, right. there's not many. There's not many guys that don't have representation uh, that uh, nobody represents themselves anymore. And 
you know, there's so much misinformation and they don't necessarily, that they, you know, the agents can have a plan, not only about how we're going to go about the negotiations, but also the PR part of it, as you know, which may be the most important thing because what people read and what people see uh, is what they, you know, is what they believe. You know, just like, for example, there was a, a text or something or a tweet, you know, there's so much, so many ways that people can create more drama in our society today that they were comparing Josh Allen's contract to, uh, <clears throat> to his. And, you know, you're not comparing apples to apples. I mean, I thought it was the dumbest thing that <laughs> It was done. You're right. It was done. Josh Allen was the seventh pick in the draft, and he got eighty-five million dollars. Where uh, Jackson was the thirty-second pick, the last pick in the first round for thirty-three million. Um, you know, you're comparing apples to oranges when you start talking about a top ten pick to the last pick in the in the first round. So, uh, but hey. There's all kinds of news and information coming out of the Biltmore Hotel there in uh, in, in the Phoenix area. You know, I, I just, I, th I think, I feel, I, you know, listen, for everybody in the building who says, you know, all the media who cover, I was on the phone with a writer the, the other day from the meetings, who by the way sends his best, I'll tell you, I'll tell you offline who it was later, but he sends his best to you. Um, I was on the phone with this particular reporter and he he's saying, he said to me, he says, he goes, every, he, Lamar's almost come to the circuit to the point where everybody's kind of feeling sorry for him. And I said, I said, well, I said, you know, I, I don't know if I don't know if I'd go that route. But Lamar Jackson is a, is one of the top has been one of the top player, players in our league. He's a he's a top ten quarterback. Everybody knows that he's he's, you know, he's tough. His teammates like him. They respect him. You know, but again, and you and I've talked about this at nauseum, Mike. You know, he plays the, his style of play. You know, lends itself. To, he's gonna he's gonna miss some games. He's you know he runs the ball. They they have they have design runs in that offense. Sometimes he's gonna take it and, and do the whole the, 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 the read thing, and he'll pick it up, he'll pull it, and he'll run. And when you do that, I mean, you set yourself up to get hurt. And he's missed some games. And you know, quite frankly, we play in a, our game. Our, our our league is 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 set up to where you know you you can't not have that guy not playing. And missing three and four and five games a season—that's tough. It's a, it's a tough it's a tough proposition. It is, Reggie, and you know the NFL is full of players that have ability, but the most important ability to have is to have availability, especially when you're the quarterback. <laughs> you you want your quarterback to be available and have availability, and well, he has missed some games. There's no doubt about it, and. Uh, that's you know that's part of the equation, and it'll be interesting to see how how this all you know works out, and it will work out. I think that the you know the Ravens are a tough to have anybody to talk to except for Lamar Jackson. They don't have representation where they can do a lot of the groundwork and get you know get the parameters of uh, what the deal is going to look like and go from there and of course you know doing the non-exclusive that's put a different you know tinge on it and there's people that are coming out and we're trying to find out who's you know who may be interested um, and basically if another team in my opinion if another team gets involved basically they're setting right. the market they're that's who's setting right. the market and um uh, if they, you know, if they agree to agree a, a, a contract, then under the non-exclusive rules, then they're going to have to give up two first-round draft picks, and that's that's Tough. a lot of capital. Tough. That's a lot of draft capital. You know, well, there was a guy, you know, Mike Mike Mad Dog Russo the other day was on ESPN said, you know, there's a lot of time and a lot of ground to cover between March and by the time we get to September. I mean, it's six months. I mean, it's it's six long months. The entire spring, the entire summer. You know, it's a long time and, and people can kiss and make up and figure it out and kumbaya and sing kumbaya and, you know, hold hands and go to go to wherever you're going to play the first week of the season. But, you know, right now it's 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 caused a lot of consternation. I mean, it had when he made that when that tweet hit, I mean, apparently Coach Harbaugh was sitting at the at the at the owner's breakfast that you and I did did what six of those. He's sitting there and he he wasn't he said he wasn't aware of the tweet. He said, I don't I don't tweet. I don't follow I'm not on Twitter. And he wasn't aware, which made me wonder, you know, where, where the PR person was, but whatever. Um, you know, 
you know, that that's tough to get that news in front of in that setting with all those reporters and you're kind of blindsided. You don't you didn't even know that, that was coming. That made it tough. But I tell you what, you know, he's a good player. They need a quarterback. Uh, you know, you know, I, I don't think there's any any question. I don't, I don't think they're gonna pick a quarterback in the draft. The, the, the guy to sort of sort of come together and figure it out, and I think that they will. Oh, they will. It's a dance, Reg. It's a dance, and uh, you know, it's it's about ten o'clock. It ain't close to midnight. We still got <laughs> we still got to cut. <laughs> All right, we'll figure it out. We're talking about how how it's only ten o'clock, Mike, with regards to where we are in the contract negotiations. Do you feel like you feel like that uh, they'll get it done? Absolutely. It may be at the eleventh dong of the, of the clock before midnight but they're going to get it done reg it it, okay. it is there's going to be some clarity uh here soon i think well let's 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 go across the country let's go to go to the niners you know john lynch the uh you know the guy who was you know turned into a gm pretty pretty decent gm so so far with the niners he, you know he was out he was out with the meetings and he was talking to the press and told him that he feels like Brock Purdy's earned the right to be their starter when he recovers from his elbow injury. I think that's all fine and good. The guy played well and sort of represented himself pretty well uh, second part of the season, specifically down the stretch. You know, but, you know, he's got, a, he's got an injury, a tough, tough injury. I mean, who says he comes back from that injury and can, and will be ready by, by training camp? It'll be, it'll be a close call for sure. Yes, it will. And, uh, you know, the quarterback situation with the 49ers, some people might look at it as bleak. I think you got to take a positive attitude because Brock Purdy came in those five and played those five games and played like a, a you know, a future Hall of Fame player. So, uh, you know, it's a small, small sample, but he did a great job. But we don't know where he's going to be come uh, ju in the end of July, first, first of August. And I think they're in a good situation because they they have Trey Lance who they have groomed to be the starter and he was last year but he's he had a foot injury I think he, he's going to be fine but they have gone out and added Sam Darnold right who Sam Darnold is one of the 50 percent of the first round draft picks that don't make it as a you know as a starter in the NFL I think he's on his third team now and of right. course you know the the quarterback that everybody thought was going to be the quarterback uh, 15 months ago, Jimmy Garoppolo, is gone, and he's the Raiders. So uh, there's been some drama in in, in uh, San Francisco quarterback drama, but I think Kyle Shanahan is a great offensive coach, a great head coach. He's done a super job, but I do think he he can handle the handle the drama. He's done it throughout his career, and I think really. Any one of those three with the right, you know, with the right coaching in terms of Sam Donald. And if anybody's going to get Sam Donald right, it's that has a chance to do it. It's going to be Kyle Shanahan. So uh, I think it's a good situation, you know, looking, you know, in the crystal ball to, for the 49ers. I think the big thing is, can they replace their defensive, you know, coordinator who's now D'Amico Rhymes, who's now in uh, Houston with the Houston Texans. I think that's going to be the big, big thing. Kyle Shanahan's going to figure it out. No matter who the quarterback is, he's going to figure it out and how they can be productive on the offense. At least that's what he's been able to do throughout his career. So he really, he really has. You know, he, he, he gets he, a lot to do about nothing. And I don't think you can come out and say as a general manager, the head coach, who's going to be the quarter quarterback on a San Francisco 49er team right now. You know, Mike, let's talk about that just for a quick second with regards to the, you know, the missed message thing. We, we sort of prided ourselves when we were together in Atlanta on making sure that the head coach was singing lead all the time, you know, or, you know, especially during the during the football playing season. And then there were, there were times where we got together, we, you know, we want to make sure you and the, you and the GM were, were on the same sheet. That's hard sometimes. I mean, if you, if you'd walked out of the meetings and you'd heard, you know, we were in that. If we if we were in that situation, you heard that the, the GM said this guy is going to be the quarterback, and you and you and you probably weren't ready to say that. How do you how do you how do you manage that? How do you how do the two of y'all manage that? Well, I think that you've got to have a discussion and uh, and be in lockstep. And I think the guy that should be leading the messaging in the offseason is the general manager. Okay. Uh, you no, know, 
I felt like it was a relief off your off the shoulders. One less thing I had to do in the in the off season when we were talking about you know team building and let the let the GM take the lead because that season is the time that we are acquiring talent. We are rebuilding the team. The head coach is definitely going to be a part of it, but it's time for the head coach, in my opinion, to step back. Uh, and that's what I like to, you know, that's how I approached it there in Atlanta. Now, you've got to have the same messaging, though. It's important. Right. That's always important, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. The messaging to be out of sync with the head coach and the general manager. We have those conversations, but it's who's out in front leading it in the media. Now, in today's world, and especially at a, at the league meetings, as you know, there's probably no other time except the Super Bowl when there's that much media uh, around. But it's probably the only time where media from Cleveland has an opportunity to talk to media from Pittsburgh condensed area and you can you know you can hit up those guys because you can see them walking down the hall you can pull them aside and there's so much information being uh, disseminated and it's misinformation as well as we know this is the misinformation time of the season of the year where you can you know you can do that in a very quick and efficient way yeah yeah it, it is it, it's the, what they call it the lion season you know, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, believe none of what you see, what you read. It's just all, it's all smoke screen and stuff. Well, it'll be interesting. Hey, you know, Reg, it's there's a bunch of guys who you can see their nose growing like Pinocchio <laughs> <laughs> as you're sitting there having a beer with them and talking. Yeah. 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 It's not, no, you're right. It's not, you're having too many beers. He's right. He's no, lying. He's, right. His mouth is moving and he's lying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, speaking of lying, you know, Mr. Mr. Mayor, who, who, who owns the Giants came out and said, you know, this week that he, he hopes that uh, his running back Saquon Barkley uh, remains with, with Big Blue for the for the remainder of his career. Then today, the headline screaming out of the New York Post is that uh, you know Saquon, who who they put the tag on, he's going to play for 10.1 million this year. He's talking, about, they're saying he's probably going to skip 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 the entire off season. Well, one, I'm not sure Saquon Barkley needs to be needs to be running drills during off season condition. I mean, he needs to be he needs to stay in shape and do all that stuff. But I don't you know I don't think it's a Huge thing that he if he misses some time for crying out loud, but but they're worried they're sort of worried about that now now that he didn't he didn't get the big contract. What's your what are your thoughts on that? And how do you as a coach obviously you want all of your guys there during the offseason conditioning, but how do you manage that? You do you want him there, Reg? But believe me, he doesn't need to be taking a whole lot of reps. Right. <laughs> and the reps that he's going to be taking in uh, in the off season are just going to be wear and tear on his legs. He's he's not going to be having contact and that's the thing about this running back position you and i have talked about it offline uh, it's the most devalued position in the national football league and has been for a number of years and it's you know to come out and it's great for the owner to say he's we want him to be a giant forever and throwing other names out like uh you know the quarterback uh, man that played his whole career and Michael Strahan and, and things like that. That's not happening in the no. NFL right now no. in terms no. of, of running backs. You know, the number that he's getting is, is the tag, you know, it, it's the tag number. And I think he was a non-exclusive as well. He was. Uh, and, and, you know, that 10.1, you know, everybody says, well, that's not nothing to, you know, to, to sneeze about or, uh, you know, he, he's, he's going to be behind uh ezekiel elliott i think derrick henry's going to be making more nick chubb dalvin cook uh, i think joe mixon and christian mccaffrey you know and there's also been you know and those guys are the highest paid and they're already talking about maybe derrick henry's going to be moved in tennessee uh, right yeah so uh it, you know it's a tough you know it's a tough situation and he's been a great player for the for the new york giants and and it's admirable for the owner to come out and say that but Let's not make it overblown that he's not going to be involved in the off-season program. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, that's overrated yeah. for certain positions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, 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 it'll be okay. That, you know, that guy, that guy, the way he plays, I think you know, you know, if he, if he's, if he's out there during an off-season sitting under a, a, a beach umbrella with a having a having a soft drink, I, I don't think it would bother me very much because we already know he'll be ready. He will, and come. 
come uh, training camp, Ezekiel Elliott will be, <laughs> uh, excuse me, not Ezekiel, we're talking about Barkley. Shaquan. He'll, yeah, Shaq, Shaquan Barkley. He'll be there with the Giants. There's no he'll doubt be. about it. You know, he'll he'll be there and he's going to be carrying the load. Uh, you know, the, the lion's share of the, of, of the rushing attempts for the New York Giants. You are the PR man, the coach talking ball on the Ball Father podcast presented by Sports Keto. Coach, you know, there's there's another shakeup that sort of kind of very quietly kind of happened in Buffalo. You know, coach, head coach Sean McDermott, you know, it was announced that Leslie Frazier was taking sort of a year off, which was sort of shocked everybody. Um, you know, you're a defensive coach, and it, it was announced at the meetings that Coach McDermott, who's a defensive, who's a defensive, defensive coach and, you know, one of the one of the most successful defensive coordinators when he, during his time in Carolina, uh, as a defensive coordinator, he's going to call the plays. Uh, you know, as a defensive, you know, what, what's your take on that? I mean, it looked like, you know, when you watched the Bills, that Coach McDermott had already been involved on the on the defensive side, the, the, specifically during the game, um, calling defensive plays or being very involved in, with the defense. How much do you think it changes now with him calling the whole defense for the whole game? Well, Reggie, it's a, it's a unique situation going on in Buffalo right now. To my recollection, I've never, ever remember a coach – stepping away from it and saying it's a one-year sabbatical uh, what you know, what coach Frazier is, has done so that in itself is a is, is a completely different situation so in one year is he coming back is he coming back to be the defensive coordinator is he going to be calling plays or is coach McDermott going to uh, continue to call, call plays after this season so there's a lot out there that's un, that there's an unknown but there is a lot that is known Sean McDermott is a defensive-minded coach. I don't think you're going to see a lot of differences in terms of they're not going to change the scheme. The verbiage is probably all going to be the same. And as you mentioned, Coach McDermott is a defensive-minded coach. He's had his hands and he's had his foot his footprint in that defense. Uh, and Sean will, you know, Sean will put a, a, a little different. Uh, angle on it in terms of maybe uh, be a little bit more aggressive, but the head coach and especially defensive head coach, even though you're not calling the plays on game day, you know what's going to be called in certain situations because you've been involved and sat down in the process that goes on through uh, through the week of what's going to be called in what situations. Got it. Got it. So I, I, you know, I don't, I don't see it. We don't, you know, the, the media made a huge deal of this. I don't see it being a situation where they're going to change things. I mean, they, they were pretty good on defense. And there were their, they had their moments where they kind of gave up some stuff, but it, I think it'll be. And Sean knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. You know, and again, I just go back to the, you know, to the situation of how, how the this process came to a fruition where he's now going to be the defensive coordinator. Like I said, uh, I don't recall ever a guy stepping away, a coach, an NFL coach stepping away and saying he's stepping away for one year. Yeah. Um, let's go also switch. To, you know, there was a lot of talk at the meetings, the recently concluded meetings about the Red, the, not the Reds, I still want to call them the Redskins, commanders. Apparently yesterday there were two offers yesterday that came in from two different ownership groups. Uh, cash on cash uh, offers for six billion dollars. The Redskins are now are, 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 are have, have announced. Mr. Snyder announced, but late last year that the Redskins are up for up for sale. Uh, apparently, he wasn't at the meetings. Apparently, I think his, he was represented by his wife and other officials from the team. Uh, Mr. Snyder bought the team in 1999 for 800 million dollars, and now there's two offers each for six billion dollars. Tells you two things. Number one. The league is in great shape as far as money and revenue and, and popularity. And, you know, whatever happens with the sailing team, you know, whatever you think of Mr. Snyder, he's going to walk away with a lot of bread when, 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 this, whole, when this whole thing gets solved uh, probably later in the year. Definitely uh, a process that they've been going through. We know we know what the conclusion is going to be and what yeah. the end is going to be. Um, Dan Snyder will not be the owner of the Washington Commanders. And I think that the league hopes it's sooner than later. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, it's just a foregone conclusion. And, and we, you know, we've talked many, many times and people have talked about the situation there with the 
Washington organization, and it will be a new, uh, under, under new leadership sooner than later. And hopefully it'll happen before the season. Uh, but it, it'll be interesting to see if the bids continue to go up or there's somebody else that comes in and gets involved with it because there's only 32 of these uh, franchises, Reg, and there's lots of, you know, there's there's lots of uh, things that can happen at the last minute negotiation. Somebody could be sitting and waiting in the wings before, right. uh, you know, before a decision is made. So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Yeah, you know, the, the last one, you know, the Bronco, the guy who, the guy, Rob, Walmart there, Rob Walton, you know, bought the Denver Broncos uh, in August for $4.65 billion. Um, and, you know, this, 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 one of the groups, the Josh Harris, Mitchell Rails group, which includes Magic Johnson, uh, Pistons submitted a, a fully financed bid for the commanders that meets Mr. Snyder's $6 billion asking price. And then there's a, a Canadian businessman, I can't pronounce his last name. He also submitted a fully funded $6 billion offer to purchase a commander. So, you know, either way, this whole thing's gonna it's gonna go down. And you're you're right. I think the league uh, is hoping that this whole this whole thing is kind of you know voted up. You know, I don't think it's gonna happen. But the next meeting is in May, so it probably won't happen by then. But you know, who knows? It could. It could be faster. Who knows? It could happen by then. You yeah, know, I saw I... something. I saw something interesting about um, the Cardinals. Cardinals new coach John Gannon is there. He's one of the, the former defense coordinator for the for the Eagles. You know, he he was saying. You know, he, he says I won't. During his opening press conference, he was saying, you know, I want a team that's full of good players. He goes, you can't win without good players. He's right about that. You can't win without good players. You Absolutely. Can't, you, can, you know, you can't, can't win with guys that you like. you got to have really good players at all spots, offense, defense, special teams. And, you know, he's talking about, you know, he goes, DeAndre Hopkins is a really good player. When he's not hurt, when he's at his best, DeAndre Hopkins is one of the top receivers in the league. And he's saying, you know, he's, he's looking forward to having DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins uh, on, on the field as part of his offense. I think that's a smart business decision on his part because that guy's a good player. He's an outstanding player, Reggie. And I know that there's uh, been some talk, again, when you're there, have all 32 owners, all 32 head coaches, all 32 GMs. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of good information that comes out of it. Uh, and you know some people were saying the bills might be in on uh, hopkins and then i think a writer for the lions came out and said uh, they he would be a good choice i don't know that they want to get rid of hopkins he's a great player and why would you why would you want to move up move on from a great player uh, on the offensive side of the ball and uh, so we'll we'll have to see on that but you know the situation there with uh, the, the coaching staff, you know, the head coach, Jonathan Gannon, he's a defensive guy. And right. I think the offensive coordinator, Drew Pet Petzing, he's just a 36-year-old guy that's uh, been nine years in the NFL, and I think he's only been two as a position coach. So he's a first-time uh, coordinator, and I'm sure uh, Coach Gannon wants to give him as many weapons as he possibly can so that he can be successful. He's, you know, another – one in the long line of young uh, offensive coordinators. And it'll be interesting to see how he does. But I know this, if DeAndre Hopkins is on that football team, the Coach Petzing's Pet got a better chance to be successful. You win with players, we know that. And you want to keep good, and he's a good one. Absolutely, I mean, I mean, Kyler Murray's come out and said, listen, hey, the first thing the offseason needs, the first thing, he goes, the first thing in the front office needs to do this offseason is to make sure Hop's with him. He said, he goes, he goes, Hops taught me so much about receivers and routes and when to deliver the ball. And he, I mean, he went this whole thing about how Hopkins has helped him. And, you know, if, if your quarterback is calling for this is the guy that I want, I mean, you got to do everything to make your quarterback. You just paid the quarterback. You paid him 200 plus million dollars. And the whole controversy that came with that contract last offseason. The guy says he wants him. I think you do everything in your power to get that guy on your football team. Yeah, you want your, you want your quarterback that you paid him. Two hundred million dollars to be a happy quarterback. Right, right. When Hopkins is on, on the squad, he's going to be a lot more happy. Look happy. He'll look happy. We're finishing up with the PR man, the coach, talking ball on the ball for the podcast. Was it about sports? Kid, you know, one of the other conferences we, we can sort of finish this up a little bit on a couple other things. Uh, you know, Colts general manager Chris Ballard, they pulled him out of the meetings, and he was talking about you know the whole Lamar Jackson thing. We started the podcast off with talking about. 
And Ballard says he thinks the coach, he says, he says, we'll be, we're open to considering, you know, having Lamar Jackson. And I thought about it when he, when I started, when I first saw that, I'm thinking, you know what? You know, it's indoors, it's downtown Indianapolis. You know, they've got a pretty good supporting cast. You know, Lamar Jackson, you know, in that with, with, with there, it makes some sense. It really does. Now, again, you got to find a partner. You got to find a partner who's willing to give up, to give up, you know, two first round picks. But I tell you what, Having Lamar Jackson in Indianapolis ain't that ain't that ain't a stupid idea. It's not by by no stretch. Hey, having Lamar Jackson anywhere is not a stupid idea <laughs> <laughs> on any football team. I mean, especially when you don't have a quarterback. I, you know, there's you know half the teams happy with their quarterback, half the teams not. So there's probably more 15 other teams that probably maybe aren't talking about it, but they probably would have an interest that Lamar Jackson could make them a better team. Uh, the Colts are just one of the teams that came out and I guess publicly stated it. And there's been a few that have come out and publicly stated they're not involved. But again, you know, negotiations should not be done in the, you know, in, in the in the public realm. It should, you know, it should be done in the paper. It shouldn't be done on, you know, on, on, on Sports Center or NFL Network, it needs to be done by the professionals. And when it happens, it'll happen. But as you know, in your profession, Reg, so many people, they want to get that scoop. They want to get that scoop. It's all about the scoop. So, uh, but Reg, hey, I'm looking, I know we're getting ready to line her, uh, shut her down here, but we need to start talking about uh, what's going on here in the next month, because there's a second opening of the transfer portal in the NCAA for a month. <laughs> so it's free agency. It's free agency coming again in the NCAA, which I know we talk most professional football, but guess what? College football is professional football now. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, Mother League. <laughs> yeah, it is. We, we, my son had a situation yesterday uh, about a portal situation. I, I won't bore you the details, but he, had, he and I had a conversation about Hey, should I tell my bosses? And I said, absolutely, you need to tell your boss. Hey, anyway, that that is coming. You're right, that is coming, and we'll and we'll chop that up. We'll probably get on that in, in the next couple of, couple of weeks. Look, we'll leave it. We'll leave it there. I, I thought it was interesting. Um, one final note that I thought was kind of interesting. Hey, Mike, look, we'll we'll, we'll reconvene next week, uh, or, or or yeah, yeah, next week to talk about whatever news is coming out. I mean, there'll all, there's always news post NFL meetings when teams get back to their sites and get back to their hometowns, and we'll uh, we'll. we'll We'll, we'll uh, re reset and, and, and sum up what's going on in the league next week when we, we catch up with you next week. Yeah, Reg, looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to that NIL uh, where the where we can talk about that NIL a little bit because there'll be some movement. There'll be some guys that have gone through spring practice that aren't happy about where they are and they're going to be changing. They're going to be changing in the in the uh, in the NCAA. So we'll, next week. we'll, we'll do it. Hey, next week. We'll do it, man. Have a good one. You talk to okay. Two buddy. Bye.